Chasing the Racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki. Part of the Global Moto Group, we supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles. 3, 2, 1 and welcome back to Chasing the Racing episode 152 and there's just myself and Dominic for this one. We are actually joined by my dad in the corner for the first time in the studio but he's just uh, a bystander just watching. He's, uh, he only comes in every like once every two years just to see what the quality <laughs> of the show is like. You know, So this is like our audit, <laughs> our internal audit on this one. So I'm, do you know I'm trying not to look at him. I'm like, do you know shit, <laughs> my supervisor's there. Can I tell you something funny? Do you know every time that we're like breaking a new record or like when we're hit like a million downloads and then when we get like a record week or whatever anytime we have any success on the podcast <laughs> my dad always reminds us that it, it was it was my idea that, <laughs> it was a good idea of mine wasn't it <laughs> but um i full uh, credit just, full credit full just credit. myself and dominic for this one uh we're recording this a uh, day after silverstone and yeah. uh, you were uh, you were also doing a track day at cadwell which we'll get on to but um just a quick one to say um if you're watching this i'm feeling a little bit you look uh, i'm looking a bit uh, second hand and, that's and you look like no you look you look as stiff as a bishop's dick mate you really are you you're looking rigid mate. you're looking rigid and uh, i am very sore and a bit dizzy and um yes i got so the race a two of the weekend which was the first race yesterday uh, i was involved in an accident where tom sykes had a high side coming out of brooklands and it was early on in the race i think lap three or lap four something so everyone was quite close together danny kent managed to just swerve around him Dan Linfoot then hit the brakes hard and I was right behind Dan so as he hit the brakes hard I, I also hit the brakes hard and uh, unfortunately sort of rear-ended them went over the top and uh, had a very hard impact on my head and on my sort of hip so um, yeah I'm feeling very second hand today but uh as so you're going away for Cookstown this weekend and then staying in over on no is it Northern Ireland it's Northern Ireland yeah, I for uh, Tandragee so uh, we've we'll basically have to get some podcasts in this weekend to make sure that we're going to hit our deadline of Sunday night and um we're just say, we're just saying before the show the last time where we missed a week must have been like about a year or something. That's when the rest of the family got involved and Grace started joining the team. Yeah. <laughs> regimental, regimental. After, after doing the podcast for about a year, we realised that consistency was some, like really important. And so we, we sort of set our, it's our own deadline at the end of the day, but we set that deadline of Sunday night. So if, um, when this does go out, if you sat there watching it and enjoying it, so it's, um, <laughs> it it was a bit of a squeeze to get in, but we yeah. You have had a head knock, haven't you? I tell you what, let's let's go back to that little scenario. I tell you what, right from a watching it back on the footage and stuff like that, it was like you were tipping in, and you could almost see Tom Sykes, and you were still mid corner. Dominic started questioning the pod. You at that point of corner entry, you had no idea that Tom Sykes was mid air at that point, did you? So or can you remember? Yeah, this as, is as you come around, thing. as you come around Brooklyn's like full, fully lent over. I remember sort of my initial thing was I seen Tom's sort of boot or whatever, and I knew there was a crash ahead. Right. So you kind of like knock off, knock off, and you kind of assess the situation, and then you're like trying to work out where the bikes are going and whatever. And then my next thing I realised. Yeah, obviously race bikes don't have uh, brake lights but as soon as you see something shooting towards you you know they've hit the brakes hard so i seen Linford hit the brakes hard and then obviously my initial thing was to brake hard as well now as you brake hard on a motorcycle the the sort of physics in it keep the bike bolt upright so if you brake 100% you can't lean at the same time Yeah. now when I'm watching it back I'm kicking myself because if I'd just carried on on my normal line and went for the apex I would have actually because as the crash happened it went off to the left but the fact is your first initial reaction when someone's on the ground is to brake hard because <laughs> yeah, you, you, course, yeah. you, you sort of want to make you don't want to hurt someone. Make, yeah, you <laughs> want to make sure that they're okay type of thing. So um, the fact that I sort of sat up and broke hard, it's kind of um, like when you watch it back, you sort of think, well, I probably could have avoided it. But at the time, you just follow your instincts and that's um, that's how it happens. For our fantastic listeners, can you like, what gear you in? Bear in mind you're on a superbike. You've stepped up to the big boy class, yeah. so you're on a superbike. So what gear are you in this and what... At a prediction of speed, we're well, saying that prediction. Oh, very, you you will no slow, yeah. know exactly what speed. You're no, doing. no, it's very slow. It's um, so you come down that back straight and you go back. <laughs> hold to, on, hold on. Sorry, 
slows 20 mile an hour son you know what i mean so let's it won't be that far off to be fair so second gear really? uh, yeah um but mid corner brooklyn's you're probably doing about i'm at a, at a guess i would say about 60 miles an hour or something and then you get back on the gas so it, w- it wasn't a fast crash at all it was the, the but the reason I, w- I was injured was because of the impact the way that i sort of felt was quite nasty now interestingly so after I was definitely unconscious and I remember I remember going into the crash and I remember being um I remember everything up to the point of crashing and then my next memory was getting stretched off and and then obviously like very dizzy and I was completely my body was completely numb at first I was very worried that I'd done something serious but then as they took us to the medical center I started to regain I could start moving and then and the x-rays and everything and nothing was broken however when I've watched the crash well we watched the crash back actually you see it's absolutely smack my head off the ground it's very very hard impact but then as I continue rolling and I'm still it I actually lift my head up off the ground so if I was knocked out I don't understand how how I've because you'd have to use the you your neck muscles to lift it back up, wouldn't you? A hundred percent. I don't think you were knocked out. Now oh, don't get me Dr. wrong. Dom. I, was, I was about to say I, lo- I left my docker in the toilet of the downstairs loo in the Rouse household somewhere. Someone must have wiped their ass on it. But there you go. But uh, no, it's a fact that like you hit normally when someone's knocked out, they tend to just they tend to ragdoll more. You actually quite you know you you're bracing for impact more than anything got, and got, you, you definitely lifted your head but like you say I've got, I've got absolutely no memory of the lying by the side of the track and when I've watched it back I was th- I think I must have been there for maybe about a minute before the, the fully stretched us off yeah. so I, I was um, there's definitely a time when I was unconscious I'll well, put it this way you didn't get up and start you know doing the Macarena did you you know it was it was very much a whack off the floor it, 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 in all in um, all seriousness I feel very lucky that the with with my injuries to be fair from from that crash i've actually brought my i never thought i was going to get my bell out on the podcast but, <laughs> but, um, here's the, um, for anyone watching youtube this is the this is me helmet and i, I haven't actually showed all you, the female listeners yeah, are being logging in right now i haven't actually showed you this but uh, this this was where the impact was and it is it's oh. went very uh, sort of soft in there so you can see where it's it's done its job and taken the impact i tell you what though the, the like unf- unf- unfortunately son you, you've done something you You've answered a lot of people's questions because when people bring on a new product to the market, because like when we had Lee Johnson and Paul Jordan on, it's like, oh, you've both gone to like bell lids and stuff. And people need to see this stuff in action. And obviously, if you go and look on the internet there, get yourself logged into YouTube and type in Chrissy Rouse and no doubt it'll... it'll... How, how did you find it anyway? Was it on the highlight reel? I don't know. It was just on YouTube. It was on YouTube somewhere. So basically, like you say, it's a 60 mile an hour full impact crash. It's not like you had time to glide. You got slingshotted into the floor and the fact that you're still here with a smile on your face with no head injuries you know that that's incredible Chrissy you know yeah. and no no one's going to escape a headache <laughs> like you know on that side of things actually, so fair play to Bell Helmets yeah. fair play I actually had a message today which I thought was a bit um, it was a bit of an odd question really but someone someone said something along the lines of if if you were wearing a if you were wearing and then named a few other brands like Arai and Shui do you um, you might not have been knocked out or something, and I and I, I mean, <laughs> helmet testing. If do you know what sharp testing is? Yeah, yeah. So they drop it. It's an anvil test, essentially, isn't it? I don't know, but sh- uh, sharp <laughs> sharp test. Sorry, the way you said that question is like <laughs> the helmets. <laughs> well, what did you say? Anvil. Anvil testing. So they hold it at a height, uh-huh. and they've got like a point, like a sharp point. Right. And so basically, they they increase the impact, and they just build it up from there. So that then they rate it from obviously low to high. I think it's one to five. Yeah, mm-hmm. isn't it? The so, stars. Yeah. yeah. And um, if you so if you check that out, and the the manufacturers can't give their own helmets for the sharp test, and they take thirty random ones from from shops. So yes. like they can't. It's not like the manufacturer could make a special helmet to go for the sharp testing. Yeah. Like it, it's it's imp- the manufacturers can't fudge the results. And um, rightly so, you're talking about people's lives in this situation. But yeah, aren't bef- you? Before I chose chose which helmet to wear this year, this. Uh, the, the helmet that I am wearing is like top of the range. It's like I think the the retail price is about six hundred and fifty quid, and it's five. It gets the maximum rating, five star rating. So, um, like I said, but it's funny with helmets. It's one of those things which you. Uh, do you know how everyone in the world has confirmation bias where you, you have your own opinions and mm. then whatever the facts you then you then make that fit your opinions so for yeah. example if you buy say a, a top of the range helmet and you and you have a crash if even if the cr- the helmet like splits in half and l- whatever but if you still survive 
you you would say it's done its job. You would say it's done its job. But if you had a rubbish helmet, it might actually have done a good job. But it, it, your confirmation bias kind of things. It's almost like blind faith. But at the end of the day, you can check the data for yourself. And if you go on the shop's website, you can put any manufacturer in any model, and it'll tell you all of that data. And at the end of the day, it's the data that counts, isn't it? You can you can say what you want, but it's like the facts that. Like I know a couple of lads. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to mention the brand, but like like Johnny Watt, Northern Irish lad, and yeah. his head was absolutely battered into an inch of his life, and the helmet split. I mean, chin piece right up to the side, and everything. You thought, I'm just never going near that brand, even if they turned up and said, "Look, there's a lock of money to go racing and stuff like that." I'm like, "Look, no way, no way would I wear that brand." It's quite uh, not. not it's it is a well known brand. Yeah. It is, but I'm just like I'm not going near it solely because of that reason, like you say. But he's still alive. You know what I mean. So the helmet has done its job. I see what your point is, but yeah. But after seeing what you've gone through, unfortunately, you, you you've, you've done you've done bell lids a, a hell of a justice by doing that. Mm-hmm. And same with RST because we were actually looking at your suit there, and it's held up absolutely brilliantly there. I absolutely uh, brilliant. I've actually brought it in here. It's um. Yeah, it's well. I'll, I'll quickly just lift it up just for anyone watching on the YouTube. But yeah, it's, it was just a little impact on the left hand side. Uh, the my da- my damage is t- to my hip, so I didn't actually slide very far. But yeah, it's uh, absolutely done its job. And I'm, I bet mind. I, I love the colours for this year. Um, obviously, this weekend was the first time that I had all the the bike out with all the garage board and all the leathers, helmet, everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was like, I was over the moon with how it's turned out. The colour of the bike was um, painted. It's like a sort of rich dark blue but then it's also painted with silver so it gives like a metal in the sunshine it gives like a metallic blue with the bright orange it looks absolutely amazing so who's painted that then for the team i, re- I should know oh, this and i'm gonna get in trouble as well because <laughs> the team have sorted it gabriel sorted it and i will find out the painter's name and i'll give you give them a good plug on the next podcast there you are the promises, the, promises. Uh, yeah they absolutely deserve it but um yeah can't can't but chuffed a bits with that but yeah let's and- and not even not even just that. Like um, I think I saw on your social media that you were like up till like three in the morning with Excel signs, getting all the garage boarding done and everything like that. It looked absolutely. Put it this way, mate. I felt uncomfortable walking in there. It was far too posh. Yeah, I was oh, like, that's... going, I'm I'm leaving. I shouldn't but, be here. Like <laughs> obviously <laughs> stepping up to super bikes this year. It's it is part of a big show and. As if you like it or not, it's um the sort of presentation and the how you the. the yeah, how you basically portray yourself is a massive part of it. And um, so f- as there's not like I'm a very, very small part of of the whole thing. And the amount of people that have sort of pulled together and helped us out. And I mean, there's so- lots of good companies that have, have sponsored us certain things and whatever. But as part of that, um, my a good friend, Josh Corner, that you met a few weeks ago, I went around his house a couple, uh, good, uh, maybe about a month ago and we sat down and got all the sponsors on and all in the right places. And um it came up with a real sort of nice design. It's sort of it, corporate colours, so blue and bright, uh, blue and bright orange. But we've also got like a, a maths theme running through as well. So if you if you come into our box, you'll see uh, along the bottom it's got like sort of algebra and then fades in. So it's like light blue to dark blue. It looks really really cool. And uh, yeah, so Josh did a mega job with that, and then we sent it off to sort of Gareth at XL Signs. He then, I bet he was over the moon. Uh, it, like yeah, yeah, it'll only take you ten minutes, mate. Yeah. Only like ten minutes max. So Go give him all the. Um, so at the boards that we've got are seamless boards, so they're, they're sort of wrapped around the edge. And um, so we give them all, all the sizings with the bleeding. He printed them off and you've got to leave them for a few days to, um, he said to set. To, it's to like gas out, I think he said, from the printing and then laminate over the top. And then we had w- one night we just went down. Um, Josh and Josh's dad, Mark, came. And uh, myself and Gareth, uh, I was like a spare part, to be fair, just feeding them stuff. And they were all doing the technical <laughs> stuff. But, uh, yeah, they d- did a mega job. It's it's obviously, it's difficult to, you know, to get a, a two metre by one metre board and a big sticker and get it on without oh, God, any I... bubbles and stuff. So, yeah, they, they did an absolute mega job. And it was a really cool point where we got it all up. And um, like I say, there's, there's so many people 
bit of the jigsaw, you know, of, we did like two runs down to Bournemouth, uh, myself and Alan Towell in, in his van to collect all the stuff. And then all the people that have say, clubbed together to sort of put it to, get, to make it happen. We've got the uh, supporters wall, which I've mentioned quite a few times on here, but first time... No, that... you haven't mentioned it all to me. <laughs> yeah. I think you should mention it one more time. First, first time that's been out and it was it was great for people to come in the garage and sort of see themselves on the board and stuff, get pictures. That was really cool. But... And the whole, yeah, whole setup was absolutely... For everyone that has helped us out, um, it's it's massively appreciated. And just to finish that off as well, the last sort of piece of the jigsaw, um, which I thought was a great sort of story and it, it means a lot to us, was uh, we needed some flooring. And a very good friend of mine that when I first started racing, uh, he was one of my main competitors, a lad called Tommy Mountain. And um, yeah, myself and Tommy have like had loads of on-track battles. Unfortunately, a few years after we started racing, Tommy sort of... Um, stop racing for yeah. for a few reasons and then it's from then he's he's got into he got into laying carpets and he's built built himself a good little business doing carpets and floor like ceramic tiles really cool a cool little business and um he's he's actually sponsored us he, he stuck us a, a little bit of money and also uh, what a fella. All, all, all the carpets for the garage so yeah the whole thing it looks it if you could just walk down pit lane, you would walk in and you would think this team's got like a massive budget for like loads of things. But it really has been like sort of beg and borrow off everyone and sort of put it together. And I was I was uh, incredibly proud to be to be part of it. Really, it uh, yeah, it looks really cool. So how did the first run go? Like I tell you what, even go from like free practice one onwards, really. But saying that, yeah, even going back to the testing, it was just like like any new bike, you had to even problems, didn't you? Yeah. So it was just like little daft. I mean, is daft things fair enough to say? It's just like clutch, clutch is getting bedded in and such like that, isn't it? So it's... Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll give a quick rundown on my weekend and then we'll just go into the, and we can talk about yeah, yeah. all the classes and all, oh, yeah. all the things. So yeah, from my from my point of view, obviously, we, we had the test at Silverstone a few weeks ago. So um, we had a sort of rough, rough idea of like where we we're going to start the weekend. FP1 was decent, got straight in. Um, let's just think, I think I went out on all tyres, but I went faster than what I'd done at the test. So I was like a good sort of starting point. And then from FP, beginning of FP2, we had a, a clutch problem. So first lap, uh, the clutch went. So I spent most of the time in the pits and Phil and the lads uh, quickly changed clutch during the sessions and got us back out. How many people could do that, is it? Yeah. You know, you... And then... Uh, it's impressive. Yeah, free practice three, made a very good step with the bike, um, just in terms of we'll sort of analyse the data and... Um, yeah, just change the bike around a little bit. Yeah, um, and big, big, big improvement. Qualifying, qualifying was actually the only part of the weekend which I was kind of disappointed with myself. Um, the rest of the self, I, I felt like I sort of held my own and uh, sh- showed a good account of myself. Qualifying, I've for whatever reason, I just didn't really string a lap together, a good lap together, and so I was twenty uh, sixth on the grid. However, I wasn't. It was the first time I dropped in the fifty threes and. I was, you know, not not a great deal off sort of where I wanted to be, but um, it's such a small track that like a couple of tenths is massive around there. In um, from the race, I started twenty sixth, got a mega. Uh, well, I was no, sorry, I didn't. Just got an averagey start, uh, picked <laughs> off a few f- first few laps, and just gradually just worked my way through the pack. I was expect after watching the Superstock race, which we'll get onto later, that was carnage. So I was kind of expecting if I stayed out of trouble, I would make up quite a bit of ground. But as it happened, everyone, everybody everyone towed the line. Yeah, everyone, everyone behaved. Everyone was really sensible. So um, there oh, wasn't, for God's sake, yeah, there wasn't many um, many DNFs in. Front front of us so every position i went up was like a genuine position if you know you yeah. know what i mean and um yeah got up to i was up to 16th or 17th um i'd sort of followed tom neve through on the honda and he's gone well mine he's adapted yeah. really well to he's the pseudo bike doesn't he doing well and i'm making right dogs dinner at this carry on no, there you go and I uh, yeah. dropped drop my times down lovely. And um, unfortunately, with I think it was about seven or eight laps to go, the the engine dropped. So I think it dropped a valve in the engine. So unfortunately, flat out around the last corner, I just had to pull off, uh, hit the brakes and just pull off into the side mm. and retire from the race. So came back in the box. There was everyone was absolutely chuffed, obviously not chuffed with uh, the bike, pack, the bike problems, yeah, but that's that's just part mm. of racing. But from our point of view, we're absolutely chuffed the bits with how the race had gone. Mm. Um, in terms of my lap time, I'd done the 15th fastest lap time of the race, which out of a grid of 32, 33 riders, I was over the moon with. There was top riders just in front of us that I was kind of doing the same lap times as, and 
in terms of lap lap times compared i know it's not much of a bmw track but compared to the top bmw i was i was something like two and a half tenths off fastest two and a half tenths so i was like i'm really really happy with that to be fair and um, that'll be the bear in mind those lads you know you got the cinetic of a uh, Bucking. Bucking and Andy Irwin. Andy Irwin. Hickman. Hick- he was up there. You know what I mean? Hickman, Two Ryan temps Vickers, off yeah. that. That's how silent. So, ah, yeah. Hold, hold and, and, bef- and blowing a bit more smoke up your ass. Bear in mind, you, you're sandwiched between the poor bird lads. Yes. So you know what I mean? Like, the, mate, well done. That that was kind of <laughs> my highlight of the weekend, to be fair. I know the, uh, the both, all, all three Ducatis were don't do very well at all, and it's not a very, it's not a good track for Ducatis. But even so, it was, it was great to be. So for the next race, I was sat on the grid. Uh, there was Haslam. And Haslam and Hickman in front, and Brooksy, and then Sykesy was behind. So to have Sykesy behind her on my on my like first weekend, although I know he wasn't having a good weekend, even so, you know, twice World Superbike champion, he's been like a hero of mine going on. When I first started watching BSB, he was riding for the Rizla Suzuki team, and he was uh, yeah. I've I've always like grown up sort of watching him race. So to be to be on for in, even just to be on the grid with them was cool, but to be in front of them on the grid was absolutely amazing. So and to was, knock you off as well, you know, uh, well, it's, as it's it happened, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, overall, so yeah, obviously I've I've ended up being involved with that accident and that sort of em- ended our week prematurely. But the overall, there was a hell of a lot of positives to take from the weekend. Um, the the team worked fantastic. It's it, some of them are kind of I've mentioned before, like we've had so, a few new recruits, but essentially it's very much it's a very similar sort of team to when we did the in twenty twenty, and um, yeah, just it's such a fantastic atmosphere. Um, I, my little sister came all weekend and was involved, and the sheep just picked it up straight away. She just couldn't believe what a like a buzz there was in the garage. Uh, it was so good to have our sponsors in all weekend, looking after people really like providing like a, a special experience for everyone and um yeah it, even though we just seem to have like hurdle after hurdle engine go clutch go this go this go and it every it, we had loads of like hurdles to get over over the weekend but not, uh, not there's no like egos in the team at all not there's no crosswords everyone's just working for a common purpose and it's um it's a really cool thing to be part of and i f- yeah i feel incredibly lucky to be to be in the team to start with and um yeah it's it was like if you look on paper dnf dnf dns it's it sounds like a disastrous weekend but um like i said i'm i'm, I'm chuffed to bits with it really happy good with it. good i'll tell you what though it'd be good to get gabriel and uh crowy on and it, like the rest of them just because to be honest like walking in totally agree with you everyone's there for the right reason but you could you could feel the pressure of the situation the fact of like the superbike element not in a negative fashion but it was just like it was that total there is a step up you know, a, you know, there's a step up. I mean, it's, and everyone it's, can feel the same thing. You know, it's it, it's which is good. It's a huge step up, and it. But like, I, f- I felt like the the team was. The, there's lots of new things, like such oh, as okay. uh, in Superstock, you would you sometimes change a rear on the grid, but it very rarely. Superbikes, you change both wheels on the grid. So to like to turn up and you know, it's for for a group of people that maybe haven't done that before, and they all just seem to just fall into place. And obviously, we've got very. Um, Everything's planned out, and everyone knows the positions. Everyone knows has got their jobs to do for the weekend. And um, yeah, I was really proud of of the group. And also, I mentioned the engine went in the first race, but that meant obviously we had to change engines uh, for yeah. the for the the next day. So you know, it was a long night. But like I say, it was. Um, they're a, they're a very special group of people. So. And I know everyone's favourite uh, podcaster, Piggy, would be uh, he'd be gutted for you, but I bet he loved getting proper stuck in as well. I bet he had a big smile on his face secretly. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Engines yeah. out, swapping this, swapping that. He wouldn't add his hand. But I tell you what, while, while we're still talking about yeah, performance and stuff like that, I, how gutted are you to be missing the test for Alton Park? Because obviously yeah. a head injury won't allow you to do, will it? Yeah, so I'm supposed to be... Well, by the time this podcast goes out, it'll, it'll be in the past. But uh, yeah, I was, I'm, I was supposed to be out on Thursday at Alton Park. This time of the season's obviously critical. Like, we've, we've got um, very little experience on everything. So track time, especially at a circuit that we're going to race at a week and a half after, is like invaluable. So it is, it is a massive uh, blow to us as a team that I'm going to be missing that test. But at the end of the day, there's... There's no, um, there's no kind of external like I haven't got to finish in a certain position at Alton Park. I'm not. Oh yeah. I, so the, it, at the end of the day, these first few rounds they're very much like a learning thing anyway. So the fact if I'm 
it, it, it's sort of irrelevant. Obviously, I would I would benefit massively from doing the test, but I'll in my own mind I'll I'll have I'll take that into consideration when I'm at Alton Park racing and and um yeah it's it's not a massive deal. Um, but I, yeah. I I think I think you've done an absolutely outstanding job, Chrissy. I really do. I just think you you showed progression, you showed the pace, but I think the most important thing you showed was your maturity as a professional rider. You know, the fact is you could have easily jumped in there going, right, I'm here to, you know, you could have just thrown everything at the wall. You could have bent the bike all by yourself and everything like that. And no, you did you did it absolutely brilliant. But like mm. you say on paper, if someone looked at the result sheets again, yeah, he's, uh, he's a bit off more than he can chew here. Like, But it, it total opposite, mm -hmm. total opposite. I mean, so all, fair play, mate. Over the fair weekend, I've, I was um, I was just tiny sort of steps steps every time I went out it was like baby steps and every, every session I progressed with my times and not just found a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more but without taking liberties without t I, at no point did I feel like I was taking any risks I was very very much in my comfort zone just before I crashed I was thinking I was kind of thinking this is perfect would changed engine so I had like a different spec engine so I yeah. was struggling a little bit for straight line speed but at, across the lap, I was comfortable on the back of that group, yes. and I was thinking this is perfect because I was. I, I thought we would get a full, you know, thirty laps in race distance, get some invaluable experience, and <clears throat> as it happened, Takahashi, who who um, I, I was ahead of in the first race and ahead of at that race, ended up getting the last point. So realistically, I think we would have been battling for that last that last point, which would have been up for our first weekend would have been an incredible achievement, and. It, in a funny sort of way, I sort of feel like that's where we'll... Do you know what I mean? Like, I, well, realistically, yeah. that's where we would have been. So that's what I'm saying. I'm, I am chuffed with the weekend for that reason. But, um, yeah, it we've got... A, it's a hell of a long season ahead. And yeah. uh, there's lots... Like, it, motorbike racing, you know what it's like. It's just... You never know what's around the corner. It's for loads... Every single race, if if you go to the medical centre after every race, there's always somebody there that's either seriously hurt themselves, bike smashed up, bike problems. Like We'll go through it, but, like... Uh, breakdowns there's so many variables um it's and that's um, part of the love of the sport isn't it the it ups is. and the downs isn't it so it there is. we go. but i tell you what speaking of ups i'll tell you who will be a very happy boy right now glenn Irwin. what a performance that was mine on the triple and i'm gonna say it not many people saw it happen did yeah. they and i thought you know what that like outstanding riding you know and let's especially after the so after the off season that he's had yeah uh, glenn had a, sh a big crash in the off season and um d like damaged himself quite a bit yeah uh, so to come out first round and you know i, I correct us if i'm wrong but i can't remember a honda winning round there before it's always been like a suzuki track yamaha track Ooh. um bill base and mccams have always dominated there uh, OMG got the the first race win there with Josh Elliott on the Suzuki, so yeah, for for a Honda to come out be on pole position with a absolutely stunning lap fifty, it was a fifty two seven, which is like re re unbelievable. That just it just it's, happened as well. I remember watching that on the screen, and I tell you what, he 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 knew it before he even crossed the line. He mm. was jumping up and down on the seat because so that, that that was like obliterated the lap record and just like um, the race pace like it was like brad and kyle kept swapping the lap record didn't it It was like 53 one fit like and then it kept swapping who actually got the lap record was it who pinched the lap record i don't know who end. ended up getting the fastest lap to be fair i think uh, the last race of the uh, was it one of the omg lads i think Something like that. I don't know, actually. But, I mean, Timon's, like, us incredibly close. I mentioned before, I was um, I, I was miles back and, and with a 53-7. You went miles And then back. you're talking That's about, like, you, I it? think Glenn won the last race. In fact, I'll check now. Glenn won the last race with, like, a, his, I think his best lap was, like, maybe a 53-3, something like that. Um, I have got to ask you a question. You know, after we... Yeah, 53-3. And then you're looking back and like somebody that finished, say, uh, 13th, Leon Haslam, 53-5. So his best lap was two tenths difference. But you at the end of the race, there's like, what, 12, 13 seconds difference. So a lot of it's consistency as well as just being able to do that one lap, looking after your tyre. There's so many variables. I tell you what, though, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a, one of my questions of the pod. One of my questions is, do you reckon the next round goes well? And then you've got Donington before the TT. Yeah. Say Glenn keeps this momentum going like he did. Was it 2018? 18 or 19? You know when Glenn and Andrew were winning on the Hondas kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. Do you reckon Javier could pull, could pull Glenn's TT? 
Well, he could, but no, 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 no. I know he could, but do you reckon he will or won't? I'd, I'd, no, be, no, no. Very adamant on a no. No, definitely not. I'd, I'd, there's a gap. Um, yeah, I just don't think so. Because mm. I remember Javier going. He was like, like, as long as as long as his British doesn't slip, you know, what I mean, he could do the TT. It was that kind of element with the contract? Mm. It's just it was. Obviously, there's nothing insinuating that that's going to happen at all. It was just a, it was just a thought and the long drive home, and I'm thinking, my God, you know, if he's if he's walking away with a championship like Jason O'Halloran did last year, kind of thing. But that's where the showdown comes into play, mm. and you're thinking, Glenn, Glenn, and everyone will know that the TT is always there for him. You yep. know, he's 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 a hell of a road racer, and the door will be open. And I think it's very important. I think it's very good for the TT that Glenn's going. Mm-hmm. I think. Perfect. Like very absolutely high profile. Ri- very high profile rider. He's got the right attitude and he's good for the fans. But it's a bit, you know, if he's starting to walk away with the championship, the confidence high, and if he keeps dominating like he did in that last race, it's a bit like I tell you what, son. Let's just try and ride this train out. Let's see how you get on with this one. Win the British Championship and then go to the TT the following year. Mm. It just, just, uh, just an idea, you know, to get people's thoughts going there. Yeah, fair point. Can't see it happening, but it'll be interesting. It will mm. be interesting. But I tell you what, um, Alan will be a very happy man from OMG Racing. He's just purchased two Yamahas from uh, last year's championship winners, and them two lads were flying. I know it's um, absolutely it's flying. Do you know what? I remember when we were speaking to. Uh, I think when no one were interviewed, I think it was Steve Rogers, and he was saying how obviously Alan had bought the bikes, and yeah. then I think Steve sent sent all of his top his technician te- teams over yeah, just... to like get them set up and stuff. And then I wonder now, like say after the first round, when St- uh, like Steve has got a thing for Yamaha, like he wants Yamahas to be well, he wants four Yamahas at the front. Oh, you can tell, yeah. But at the same time, you know, you, there's always that selfish thing of you want your own te- you want your own boys to do the or. Uh, do the right, business to do the he? best yeah and in this case you know like he's kind of he's both his lads two two lads on a Yamaha's and uh, Kyle and Kyle's second in the championship Bradley Ray's fifth and then his riders who was dominating last year is now sixth and obviously Taz is out with an injury but I wonder if if there is a you know if it gets to the end of the season and let's just say that Kyle and Brad are both ahead of Taz and Jason I wonder if there'll be like a little bit of being like sort of or oh, after kind of you know, like yeah, I know what you my, mean. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. It shot myself in the foot, sort of thing. Kind of thing. Yeah, I totally agree with that. But that—that's, I think that's a good thing about Steve. Is when we interviewed him, he's—he's he's always up for a fair fight, isn't he? Mm-hmm. You can always tell that with his attitude. You know, it's um, it, nah, I know exactly what you're getting at. It's a little bit like, you no, know, if you find, if you found something that was like, like let's say you went to the TT and you found a line that was like, no, <laughs> you'd not seen anyone else use a shortcut. <laughs> Well, let's just yeah, say no, there's like right, a particular right. jump where everyone was rolling, but you found that you could do it at a certain point of the course and you could hold it flat out and you were making like a couple of seconds on everyone there. The last thing you would do is just tell, tell anybody, you know. <laughs> Why I? You, you just wouldn't, would you? Nah. So it's um, <laughs> Steve, well, McCam's almost had the golden formula last year for BSB. Mm. They the absolutely dominated the championship. Taz took 11 race wins. Jason Allen took 10 out of 33 races. That's a huge, huge percentage for one mm. team. And... Um, Obviously, you can't read into it from the first round because, let's face it, Jason could go out next in a week's time at Olden Park and but look what he did last time, do the triple. But it's let's just see how that one plans out. Because I t- um, what was I going to say there? What was I going to say there? What what's Taz looking like for fitness wise? I think he's getting the cast off this week. Yeah, I've got, at I, some point, I, it'll be interesting to see if he gets back on it. But I don't think he's doing the test. Or oh, is he doing the test? I've got no idea, mate. I think I think he's going to try and get out on the bike. That's the last I heard, anyway. I think he's going to try and get out on the bike and just see see how he feels, which is the right thing to do, isn't it? But my God, they don't hang about, do they? No. Like, <laughs> injuries are, like, at that level, you're just, to- like, in you get, play you up, piss you off, off you go. In terms of the championship, so uh, Glenn's actually got a massive lead already, 29 points, uh, which is incredible at this at this time. And it then- doesn't matter with a showdown, that's the upsetting thing, yeah. isn't it? It's mad, isn't and, it? And then uh, Kyle Ride in second, Rory Skinner in third, Andy Owen in fourth, Bradley Ray fifth, Jason Allen sixth, Lee Jackson seventh, Tommy Bridewell eighth, Danny Buck and ninth, Pete Hickman tenth, Christian in eleventh, Josh Brooks twelfth, Tom Neve thirteenth, Dan Linford fourteenth, Ryan Vickers fifteenth, Tom Sykes sixteenth, Leon Haslam seventeenth, and Danny Kent eighteenth. That's the championship standings at the moment. Just a few quick quick notes. I think uh, I, I did feel like there was the 
and you can't you can't extrapolate it from one round but i did feel like it was a little bit of like a changing of the guards this weekend in terms of i was sort of expecting the likes of haslam sykes and the world Brooks superbike lads yeah to be right at the front and it did feel like there's like a a, a wave of youngsters that have been sort of yeah, uh, total change of the guard. Uh, in that one round that was a huge change of the guard couldn't learn, agree more kind of learning the craft over the last few years but the likes of I know Kyle's been a class act for a, a long time and he's always good at Silverstone but you know Kyle, Kyle up there Rory Skinner up there Andy Owen up there Bradley Ray up there and also yeah I think Rory Skinner had a fantastic ride them yes. FS3s are looking good and they're, they're absolutely flying them things so they've unlocked something there Skinner had a, a four, two fourths and a third so a podium as well so yeah very good and Lee Jackson Lee Jackson was had a, a, a shock and test last week at Silverstone and then from FP1 he just came out and he was right at the front so I don't know what <laughs> good I don't know what's changed from last week till this week but he was he was, ap- he was on it this weekend he was right in the leading group all weekend there was nothing between him and the, the leaders to be fair and and uh, so, yeah, just whatever, whatever just changed. And then Ducati's, Ducati's always struggle at uh, Silverstone. I think I was speaking to Wilf about it and he said you can basically set the bike up for that corner or this corner. And he said if you set it up for that corner, it's rubbish there and, if, and vice versa. Right. It's something. It's just something to do with Ducati. They've, they've always been weak there. So the fact uh, Bridewell got sort of three good finishes sort of bodes well from there, to be fair. And I'm sure he'll be very much on the pipe at uh, Alton Park next week. Um, aside from that, obviously, uh, Tom Neve, who was one of the rookies, very a good, strong route. In the points, route from, Yeah, three, three points finishes. So he got one point in the first one, two points, and then four points. So fair play to him for that one. Per- it's sort of perfect for where he is in terms of his career, stepping up to a superbike. Uh, obviously, the continuity with Honda and to get three points finishes was was bang on. Like I said, before my engine went that in that first race, I was just on the back of them. There was uh, Tom, Josh Owens, and myself. And um, yeah, ideally, I I was kind of I know there's nothing I could do with like mechanicals and sort of getting caught when someone else's crash, but ideally that's the sort of weekend that I was aiming for. Yes, uh, pace wise, I don't think there was a great deal b- between us, but like you say, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Um, <laughs> Also, I think in terms of disappointments, uh, Ryan Vickers, not not a particularly strong track for BMWs, to be fair, but um, he had 2 points, 3 points, and then he was out of the points in the last race. On his, so from uh, RAF Kawasaki to the FHO BMW. I, I wonder think, what the time lap difference is between, whether well, it'd be, wait, well, it's Silverson, it's marginal, isn't it? Yeah, I think, he, was I think he'll be disappointed with that, but in all fairness, he just, he kind of wants to start the season just with like finishing races and yeah, learning course, the BMW. Yeah. And he's he's better off, he's a hell of a lot better off finishing races, gaining experience and working his way up. So um, I, I do think there'll be a lot more to come from Ryan Vickers. Also, uh, Tom Sykes, Leon Haslam, I would have, if like I say, if I'm not a gambling person, when this is clearly why, um, <laughs> because I would have had very good money on Leon Haslam and Tom Sykes being definitely in the top six this weekend. And both of them, 16th and 17th is... Um, Definitely not. What it's I out the norm, isn't it? Yeah, uh, obviously Leon did have a um, a technical issue in the first race, but mm. to to be fifteenth and what's that for in thirteenth is um, definitely not what I expected. And Tom Sykes one one points finish for Tom Sykes, and uh, not not very good at all. Brooksy same again. He was out the points in the last race, and he got three points in the first race, five points in the second race. Not a Ducati track, like I've said, but st- he, he will be disappointed with that. I tell you what, though, no, just sorry, just another quick point. Uh, Christian Aiden on his so from Ducati to Suzuki, we, we talked about this on the podcast. The um, Silverstone is definitely the best track in the country for the Suzuki. So I think Christian will be sort of disappointed yeah. with with his weekend. But um, yeah, it will. I'm sure you'll get. You know, obviously, I'm a big fan of Christian. He'll get stuck in, and he, I'm sure he'll have a, a good season. But I, I'm pretty sure he would have liked to have have been a little bit higher up than 11th after this weekend. That's it. Like you say, it's the first round of the season. But I tell you what, though, there is a benefit of you crashing. I was thinking about this the other day. Come on, then. Well. You wouldn't be you wouldn't you wouldn't be eating out of uh, Paul Bird's hospitality if you beat both Tom and Josh, would you? I know. Well, he'd go- be kicking he'd be kicking you clean out of there, mate. Right, so thanks, be- <laughs> thanks for mentioning that. But um, yeah, I would actually just like to say a big thanks to Paul because he's um, 
uh, we mentioned on the podcast ages ago the fact that we're looking to do our own hospitality this year and get our own setup. And unfortunately, I bet your mum and dad are over the moon. Yeah. Mind they'll be like, "Oh, thank God, all that graft gone." After, <laughs> um, I obviously spoke to the, the organisers about it, and the, the basically the way it works in in the lower paddocks, you can you take your your own truck. It can be a small van or it can be a large. You can have an Arctic or whatever. And what a lot of the teams do, and what we've done in the past, is you have a bit of a garage area, and then you have a bit where you can feed people, yeah. team feed and all that sort of stuff in superbikes obviously run out of a garage so in order to have any sort of catering and hospitality you then have to bring a secondary vehicle and when i spoke to the organizers i just was uh refused a second i wasn't allowed a secondary vehicle i, I think it's only the top teams are allowed secondary vehicles yeah and then the way that it works is the 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 lower teams then purchase hospitality and team feeding from the other more established teams, which is just the 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 way it works in the in the paddock, unfortunately. But um, that that has meant that um, Paul has very very kindly helped us out with a, a great deal of hospitality, and um, it was yeah great. We're very as a team, we're incredibly grateful. Uh, it's um, it was lovely food and drink all, all over the weekend, and it's um, it's really somewhere special that uh, I was able to take my sponsors and get them looked after. So um, yeah, it's, it's um, I know people. Yeah, I'm incredibly grateful to Paul for that. So big. There we are. Shout out to him. Very good. Um, in terms, we, let's go. We let's, can go through all the classes. I was about to say, can we talk about stock? Because um, I'm I'm a big big fan of him. Tim Neve bringing the Yamaha home. When's the last time a Yamaha won a stock thousand race? There's a test for you. Mm, they were talking about this on the we, video. We definitely need a computer person. We 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 <laughs> just to chuck questions at them. You know what I mean? It's Yamaha in Superstock because Hutchie was on that bike last year. I, I think they've done a fair few changes with the bike, but no, Tim, f- absolutely fantastic. Two wins on the bounce. But I tell you who was someone to keep an eye on: Billy McConnell on that Honda. He has gelled with that fantastic. Mm. He was he was banging out some serious lap times. So uh, Tim Tim actually got his first ever. Superstock win at Which Silverstone is... back in 2020 on the Hawk Suzuki. Oh, so he, then... he has won then. This isn't his main win in Stock Thousand. No, no, he won. He won the year that I won the championship. Mid 2020. So he, there he we won go. there, and then he also won at the same track last year in 2021. And so it it was on the bounce. He got three and four. So he's he's actually won the last four Superstock races around Silverstone. Fair play, to Tim. Very good record for him. But um, yeah, on the on the Yamaha, and uh, so he's got 50 points after the race win after this weekend. Uh, first race, the, so after qualifying, Billy McConnell on the Jackson Honda was on pole position with a fantastic lap and unfortunately got wiped out by Joe Francis on the opening lap. The, the opening lap in Superstock was absolutely carnage um, with, in fact, I'll, I'll see if I can quickly find it on YouTube. So with that left kink going in, isn't it? And it just, just bottles up and everyone just seems to, <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I did, did um... Which superbike race? Did Storm Stacey have a big nasty off there as well? It's that is that little left kink, isn't it, before the right? Turn is that, is that even class as a turn? Turn two on the left. Yeah, yeah. So it's that is Mag- it's called Maggots and Beckett. I presume it's the same as on the GP track, Maggots and Beckett's. Um but yeah, it was actually at the same track, so I'll uh, it's the same part of the track. I'll see if I can mm. turn this around and show you. So I'll get my sister Story time. Get my sister to add this in. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, that's um Billy McConnell off pole position. See, he's racing for Jackson Racing this year, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. On the Jackson. Honda. Yeah, that's, that's it, yeah. And then, oh, he got he got a terrible start. He's back to I about t- six there. I tell you what, have you noticed who's up at the front there? Lewis Rollo and, uh, what do you call him, Davy Todd? Yeah, if you just keep an eye on the yellow and green bike that I was on last year, Joe Francis, so he, if you just watch oh, him come in, douche, bang. Bang, one, two. Out. Tom Ward stayed on. He did, luckily, but, uh, whoa. Jesus, where, the did, something, did something go down? No, no, it's just... It's just two more crashes scared. out the back there. Craig Neve. Oh, no. That looks like Craig, I think. Oh, yeah, it was, a, it was absolutely Craig, carnage. Um, they'll go. They'll run through it in a second, show highlights. But, yeah, uh, Joe got penalty points for that one. Uh, oh, I think there was another crash on the... the oh, yeah. Who's that? I'll tell you what, that... I think that. that's one of the Verve boys. Red flagged it straight off the bat. Yeah. Just a um, just a quick mention as well. Obviously, we can hear Steve, Steve Day doing the commentating there. Obviously, uh, we've well, we had Jack on the podcast. Yes, ago, yeah, so yeah, we, all yeah. know, we all know the story. And I've, obviously, as much as I'm a huge fan of Jack and will miss him, um, I'm 
oh, uh, similarly a massive fan of Steve Day. Um, so when I very first started racing, Steve Steve's parents were involved with setting up Thundersport. I believe the, they went in partnership. So Sid, Steve's dad, went in partnership with um, Bernadette and... My memory's gone from this crash, but Dave, <laughs> Dave and Bernadette um, went in partnership to set up Thundersport. And Steve, from a young age, has always done all the TV work. Back then, it was on Motors TV. Mm. And so I remember him coming around with a little notepad and that's sort good. of things. Get the details yeah. and, that's and then to watch, sort of from the side, to watch him go from there to then getting jobs at Eurosport to then being the lead in MotoGP and like taking press conferences for like Rossi's retirement and all of that sort of stuff. Really, really cool. He's had a fantastic career and uh, recently became a, an author. We'll have to get him on the show. I, I, I have spoke to him and he would love to come on the podcast but i, I just want to say i think he did a, a, a brilliant job and uh similarly the uh fred clark obviously packed in at the end yeah. of last year retired and, and duncan, duncan duncan took yeah. over he did a fantastic job yeah, and I, th I think he did do a, a very good job um but yeah super stock so tim took uh, both wins Braden elliott's actually second in the championship after taking a uh, well he got 20 points in the first one and eight points in the second one so very strong we gave for Braden alex olsen yeah. got knocked off again didn't he yes oh, God, um, he's, he's so Braden's off. went made a switch over to honda for this year so uh he, that is Perfect start to the season for him, doing really, really well. Uh, Tom Ward on the Aprilia is third, followed by Davy Todd, Jack Nixon, who's a rookie stepping up from junior superstock on the BMW, partnered with Alex Olsen. So they're fourth and fifth. Uh, sorry, yeah. One, two, three, four. Five. For some reason, the uh, numbers are back to front on the on the things. But Can we yeah. have a lad's name? Not Alex Olsen. Give me the other lad's name there. Jack Nixon. Was he? Did you see Superstock? He won Superstock last year. At oh, Superstock. on the bloody hell! Fair play, six hundred straight on the big bike. Yeah, he stepped up some... with FHO and had a real, real good weekend. Alex was incredibly <laughs> lucky; got taken out by Lewis Rollo in the first race, leading comfortably. And um, yeah, both uh, Lewis Rollo just ran, ran into the back of him and ah. took him down. So uh, he'll be good with that. Alex is very good round. Um, Brian Silverstone, Brent Harron also on the Honda, Billy McConnell eighth on the Honda, Dave Allingham on the Honda. It's funny because Honda, Honda's Honda obviously won the championship over. last year and inside the top 10, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six. They've got six inside the top 10, so a, a strong, strong showing for them. Lewis Rollo, Levi Day, Ian Hutchinson on the Milwaukee BMW, mm. Richard Kerr, Ashley Beach, Sean Winfield, Matt True Love, Joe Francis, Joe Talbot and Joe Sheldon Shaw rocking up the top, what's that, 19, I think. I tell you what, though, I'm over the moon to see the Padgett spikes back up there. It's like a blast from the past, that, isn't it? So they're running really nicely and really confident at the front. Yeah. Apparently, Connor Cummins is out with a more cross injury. Right, I didn't know that. That's what I've heard. I think he's twice that. I think, oh man, the scoop was saying it on the on the on live air commentary or whatever you call it. Um, he was saying that he's done his uh, collarbone in. Wow, I, I, but I to what no extent? I, I don't know what full extent it is. But Co you, you know what? Fair, collarbone, collarbones are usually nothing. Like Hutchie did, did his you collarbone. See your chick in his shoulder. And four days, I think it was four days after his after <laughs> smashing his collarbone, he was back out at tonight. And so usually collarbones you can get away with, and uh, they're not not so bad. His surgeon either loves them or hates them. It's one. It's one of those, isn't it? It's yeah. the amount of work. <laughs> I'll just uh, quickly run through. So the national, so the junior super stock. So uh, we had a. A local race winner at Franco. Yeah, I'm just finding. Oh, I've got the junior super sport here. Junior oh, super Peter, stock, that's Peter Bose will be pissing his pants with happiness. He'll be over the bloody moon, as we all are. Because now, to be fair, you said that the second we, even before interviewing, you said he was going to be a winner. And sure enough, he's delivered on the goods on that element, hasn't he? So he's, like you say, for a lad who doesn't get a huge amount of track time, he really doesn't. The fact of being able to get there and win it. Well, obviously, we've had him on the show. He's a, he's a cracking lad and uh, was such a strong show in last year. A few pole positions in the in the sort of inclement weather and then he's really shown his class coming through won, won his first race by 3.68 seconds so like that's dominating in around Silverstone uh, in like like I was saying earlier the mm. in super bikes the difference between you know first and 15 is like a couple of tenths so to, to win a race by that sort of margin is um, is massive and uh, yeah fair play to him he's um, he's a cracking lad and many... it's really nice to see someone from our local area doing well as well and J James Alderson he was see the He's another local lad from the area. He seems to be struggling, but he had, he had a big crash last year. Was it last year? Yeah, he had a he had a bit of a stinker of a weekend. To be fair, but he he will come he will come. Oh strong god, still I, but like track. I say, it was like the track the track that he uh, sorry the crash 
that he had was was massive, mate. Mm. So the fact that he's on the grid is is very impressive. Just, just a quick shout out as well. In 14th position, uh, a, a friend of mine that was like my nemesis back in the day, Callum Bay. So uh, Callum Bay, me and him battled out for the Super Team Championship in 2010. And after ra- after both stepping up to British 125s in 2011, he stopped racing. And then he's just, just coming back to race. And it's funny because the last time I seen him, he was... He was he was so small. He was um, and at the time we small had, small man. Yeah, he was he was just a, he was well obviously at the time I think he was twelve and he was like absolutely tiny and like squeaky little voice. He was just a, a small child, like a tiny child, and a phenomenal talent. Like I said, I'd I'd already had a year in super teens, and there was the likes of myself, Jake Dixon, the likes of Tommy Mountain, Jack Keane, like all all really established good lads, and. Um, we had this like little Scottish kid that was twelve jumped on this bike, and he was he was giving it to us all and like winning races and all kinds. And really, he he probably had the potential to go on to do massive things in the sport. And for whatever reason, it, it never never happened. But uh, it's funny because he had a big. His dad was like a big, big bloke, and then Callum was tiny, and then I haven't seen Callum for years. And I've seen him in the paddock. He's he's like six foot odd, like he's like a proper bloke. And it's like <laughs> weird, but uh, yeah, he's he was fourteen, so um, good to see him back out and. Um, yeah, I think that sort of rounds off super stock. There'll probably be super stock riders listening to this thing. Go on, give, give me a shot. I know, that'll be the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, Cl- uh, like, Chloe Jones, she stepped up. She was in stock. How did she get on? Uh, two seconds, I'll just get it. I'll, I'll, I'll read the podium out, so at least... The, uh, the yeah, there we are. So you have to keep, Bone, keep some friends yeah, in the paddock. There you go. Aaron Sylvester, second, and Louis Vallielli. Louis Vallielli's a nice lad. He's a good, good friend of mine as well. So he was third. So uh, fair play to all of them lads. Right, let's go... What should we do next? Super what? super uh, sport. Super. You watched Super Sport, didn't you this this weekend? Oh no 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 not Super Sport. Give me the other one. You know the three hundred class. Junior Super Sport. Junior Super Sport. My God, what Charlotte? What who, who was she on pole position? Yeah. So um, what I think a ride, mind. I believe that the, that's... the women were taking it to the blokes this weekend, mind. They were right in the mix. So I think that's the first time that we've had a a, a lady on um, pole position. Is that right? And she rides for Fei Ho. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Fair hill racing, yeah. So fair play to her. Fair play. So junior super sport, good for race one. Let's see if I'm fine. Mo- <laughs> Same Kieran Kieran Kent's on pole. What, what was Charlotte on? I'm sure Charlotte does that. Does that class? Um, Honda British Talent Cup. Just try that one. Yet again, there'll be people screaming down at their radios and their headsets, going, "No, oh, you've got it bloody wrong again." No, I can't, I- it's... We're still learning. We're like 150 odd episodes in, but we're still learning. <laughs> so grid is qualifying. Qualifying has Kieran Ken, Charlie Atkins, and James McManus. Um, yes, yeah, Charlotte's in that, but she's 16th on the grid. Hey. What, what was what was Charlotte? There was a pole position. Second race. Was it second, second race? race. Here That's we go. There we go. Let's have a look. A man on the laptop in the corner. So there grid, you are. grid for race two. Yeah, that's it. So she was 16th in qualifying and then uh, came through and did the... She was 103.825. So Charlotte Mokazo. And um, yeah, Fair I know play. her dad Fair listened play. to the podcast. So massive congratulations to Charlotte. It's uh, it's in a in a sport that's... Cu- is absolutely dominated by the by men to to be pole position and and uh, giving, it, giving it to all the lads is is such a proud moment for for her family a whole team and um yeah it's an incredible achievement so I've made up for her. well done what were you gonna say no I'm just wondering what Ho's handing out for uh, pole position bonus so she'll be <laughs> I'm sure. not sure if they get a watch in I think it's just super bikes they don't get a watch oh for god get a <laughs> watch so. something like fail by all watch hopefully fail hopefully by all watch there you go it'll be great right. but that is one hell of an achievement really is and like... then I'll just go uh, championship points for that one so Harry Cook's leading Mick, uh, Mickey Hardy and Kieran Kent brother of Danny Kent top three all right. followed by James McManus Charlie Atkins and Jack Roach so um, I didn't actually catch any of those races but if you do want to watch them if you go on on YouTube and watch the highlights or if you get the Eurosport package if you are interested you can go back and watch all of them races um, we'll go super sport because uh, you did watch some of them races and it was quite, th- quite th- hectic and quite mm. entertaining to be honest by, by the time we saw you and like uh, by the time we got you, you scraped up and everything like that I saw the back end of uh, the super sport race and I, then I've watched the highlight reels on it but more on the second side of things but in the first race it was a case where as you can imagine Jack Kennedy's back at home he's feeling comfortable and he's on an R6 so where are you going to put your money 
you're definitely going to put on Jack Kennedy, aren't you? But Bradley Peary, I think he had a mechanical. Mm. I think it was actually, I think, did he, was he leading at that point? I think, t- was, there was nothing separating them all through test and the nah. race, to be fair. But yeah, uh, Gearbox problem. So um, Brad Perry pulled out the first race. And then last race, was it was very entertaining. The two were battling it out. Yeah. Uh, he, um, Brad actually made a lovely pass. In fact, I'll, I'll see if I can find it on, on t- YouTube and I'll watch it. I'll tell you what, though. I'm, I'm, b- before you pull up the video, Jack Kennedy is... Far too clever for his own good. He can. He's just. He's just reading that far ahead of what's going on. It was just like tipping into. The, what is that left? Brooklands. That left turn. Um, That's where the move was, wasn't it? Brooklands. Yeah, it is. Brooklands. It was. Yeah, it just went in, and he just like Jack Kennedy must have just lined up and just gone. He's going to try and outbreak me. And Jack almost just went, you know what? I'm just going to leave it as late as I can. And it was almost like he knew he was going to miss the turn. And then just Brad just came in and went, bollocks. He just came in, hit the brakes and tried to make it. Now, to be fair to Brad, he tried to make the turn. Unfortunately, it didn't work. But out of everyone in that championship, the only one at the moment who's taken it to him is Bradley Perry, isn't it? Uh, Jack followed him. Jack did follow him home to be fair and kept him on his toes. That's what that's no no, that's what I mean. It's like you no, know, you know, with the fight of it. Now the the best per like you know who I think is gonna win the championship in Super Sport? I generally believe this, Lee Johnson. Do you? I generally believe it is because solely because like Lee has got the lap times, but Lee is just he's so consistent as a rider, isn't he? To be fair, if he follows if he follows them home and they start taking each other out that's, and having problems, he, he could easily clean. He could end up taking a win overall win. To be fair, uh, that's what I mean. Yeah, Jack Jack's currently on fifty points, big big lead, and then Lee Lee took home two seconds and Harry Trulove two thirds. So it was actually a complete repetition of the podium in in both uh, t- both of the opening races. Yeah, so a fair play to them. Um, <laughs> And to, I'm just having a quick look around. I would like to give a special shout out to Max Ingham, who after his first year, um, I th- well, I've mentioned him on the podcast before, and after his first year on Tarmac, he stepped up and did a couple of Superstock races last year, but very, very inexperienced. Um, he was under the coaching of Steve Brogan. Brogan. So he came from motocross and... Um, Incredibly inexperienced. Like I remember seeing him at uh, where was it Anglesey last year? Do you know when you were racing? Yeah. And like he'd for like hardly any tarmac experience. And uh, after w- one year of tarmac riding, he's then stepped up into British Super Sport, and he's currently eighth position. So he's ahead of Reese Owen, Philip Wakefield, Damon Reese, Kale Nerwin, top top riders. So um, hats off it, for me. I'd, I'd, didn't actually catch any of the race in itself, but I've just seen that in the result, and I'm um, and I'm well impressed yeah. with that. So uh, Brogy, yeah. and I'm very not, happy. Yeah. Brogy's taking full credit. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not just saying that because he's allowing us to stay at his house for the two weeks of the TT. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> he is actually. <laughs> oh, there we are. No wonder. No wonder you're getting over there. That, that no, I, I'm, I'm well well impressed with that. That is. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm roughing it in the back of me van for two weeks, and you're coming to stay in a house. I am. I am taking. Fair play, mate. I've just uh, I've just managed to get the trailer over there as well. So um, I will have this. Hopefully, Does that mean I'm the, working. Sat up in the paddock. Don't, well, you don't have to. But if there's any, if we if we've got any rained off days and you fancy doing a podcast, I'll bring all the kit across just it, in case. It never ever rains in the Isle of Man, Chrissy. Ever, like mm. ever. So Paul, they are. Paul Jordan. Yeah, had two, Paul points, jo- two points finishes. Right. So um, fair play, fair two, play. Two thirteenths. Thir- so good, good little warm up ready for the roads kicking off. Ideal. Uh, not... Just a quick shout out. Uh, G- obviously, the Super Sport class also run the GP two class alongside it. And just uh, I did see that. Uh, two seconds. I'll just let the results load up. Where we're at here. Yeah. Uh, Harry Rollins, I uh, seen he. I think pretty sure it was his first ever podium. So for in the first race, he got a third. Um, Harry Claridge got two seconds. We got Cameron Fraser got one win, and Jack Scott got the other the race win. So, there we uh, go. Fair, fair play to them. I, I tell you what, though, um, I tell you who's finding his feet really well on that stock thousand. Charlie Nesbitt, who won the GP two class last year. Yeah, he had a bit of a stinker of a weekend. To be fair, did you? He put he d- he's put the times in. He's getting stuck in. He, yes, he had a few crashes and stuff like that. But I, I, know, I know you've got to stay on the thing. But in the same breath, he, he's definitely put put Pretty, the performance. He's down. He's flying in qualifying. Let's uh, absolutely just, flying. He, the was, lad he was. was sixth on the grid. Uh, it was uh, four tenths is, is a lot. To be fair, but yeah, he was he was sixth on the grid, uh, right in the mix. But I think did he crash out of both races? 
I think he did. I'll just check championship points. I'm pretty sure he's... he's but I'm quite biased before, uh, towards him now because I think he's just absolutely he's mint not. crack after spent, like, uh, spending the week with uh, at the flat track. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he had, he's, he had he's a hell class. of a lot of potential going into the race weekend because in testing and stuff, he, he was top in time sheets and things. Um, and he, he will get results this this year. He's a, he's, a hell, he's a fantastic talent. He's on a really good bike, good team. So he will it will come good for him. But he might have been taken out. There was lots of, lots of crashes and lots of people getting taken out. So... He might have just been very unlucky this weekend, but he is a quality, quality rider. Um, just quickly, we've uh, sort of, uh, if we may as well go over all the results and now we've started. So just quickly, the points in the Honda British Talent Cup, uh, top three riders, Harrison Crosby, Keanu v- Vija, I believe you would pronounce that, and Johnny <laughs> Garnes. So um, they were the, the top three after the first round. And I'll just give a quick shout out because I've agreed. So I don't actually know the lad yet, but I've I've been asked to go to a, a fundraiser for Harley McCabe, and I have it on good authority that he's a, a lovely lad, and he's having. By the time this podcast goes out, it'll be in the past, but um, yeah, it's going to a fundraiser on Friday for him, uh, hosted by Larry Carter. Um, and that pretty much covers all of the classes. I think we've been through them all. Oh, Ducati Cup. We'll just quickly go championship points to Ducati Cup. You're determined not to miss anyone on this episode, Chris. Good uh, lad. David Shoebridge won both races and followed by Tom Tunstall and Matthew Jones. Didn't actually know Tom Tunstall. Tom Tunstall must be one of the one of the longest standing riders in the whole paddock. He's been, he's done everything. He's always turns up with his own setup and uh, he's doing the Ducati Cup this year. Two podiums for him. So he'll be over the moon with that one. Um, I don't know the age of Tom, but he's he must be... He, he probably hears for predicting his age, so I won't. But he's he's been in the paddock a long, <laughs> he's been in the paddock a long time anyway, and it's great to see him out there doing doing his bit. Now, covered all my stuff, we covered all BSB stuff. Since the last podcast, we'd already talked about you racing the Croft, but since then, you've taken delivery of your new big bike for the for this season, mm. and uh, it must it's very exciting times. You got a spin out. So last weekend up at is it East Fortune? You out? Well, no, well, actually, I was at Darley Moor for Darley one day. Man. I was on the classic bike, and then I remember sitting... Who did we have? Hudson Kenner, didn't we? And at that point, I didn't actually put an entry in to Melville because I only just taken delivery of the bike the day before. So I rang the Melville Club to try and get an entry. And um, now, to be fair to them, 100%, um, I missed the day by... the closing day by a few days. And, yeah, they refused me entry. Refused me entry for the weekend, and they think, well, fair enough, totally up to them. It's you miss it, you miss it. Simple as that. You is know, that, is that a case of fair enough, totally up to them? But I'm going to name and shame them on the podcast. No, 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 not at all. And I think you know what? I think it actually brings up a really nice point that the fact is like club racing. It is run by volunteers. Like no one's getting any money out of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Anything? Did you, did, did you drop? I was in? pissed off at the time. Did you drop? Did we like? Um, it's Dominic Herbson, um, co- co-host. Chrissy's ri- co-host Chris's of chasing the races. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of big deal. No, f- <laughs> no, I said I was Paul Jordan. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it. No, no, not at all. You dickhead. You dickhead. No. <laughs> did, you, what, did you watch the fair. last? Did you watch the last senior TT? You might have seen us. Was, <laughs> was top ten. <laughs> to be fair, that's probably why I definitely got knocked back because I mentioned me name. If anything, you know what I mean. But we're not having you up here, you bellend. But no. But like, but all seriousness, so like, I think. Totally fair play, 100% fair play to them because they're all volunteers. The amount of paperwork they've all got to go through and everything like that. And, you know, the weather was good. Now, I, I, <laughs> if I'll get the violet, I had a genuine reason that my bike wasn't there and I thought it'd be better. And this, this, is, this is hindsight and this is like, you know, like assuming and assuming gets you nowhere. Mm-hmm. But I thought, well, I don't want to put my entry in, not have the bike and turn up and go, can I actually have my money back? So I thought I'll wait, wait it out and see if I can get a last minute entry because I've raced with the club for a long time. And to be fair to them, you know, they said, look, no, um, you've missed the date. That's the end of it. I went, you know what? Fair enough. They're volunteers and I don't, you, pfft, you miss it, you miss it. But that gave me an opportunity to get down and um, come down to Silverson for the Saturday. Was I there the Friday? Friday, I. I was there Friday. Friday. And Saturday. Right, so by the time I went to see the Haves and went to see a few sponsors, pick a few, I went to see Aidan Robinson to get me um, get me face punched back in again. My mm. God, I, the eye is getting better. It's definitely getting stronger because he's um, Aidan's putting a lot of work into it. It's just, <laughs> that man, um, that man enjoys hurting you to make you feel better. It's like a dodgy tattoo. 
Sorry, you don't have any tattoos, dear. Sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at you for an exp- like straight every answer. Head. Straight oh. over your head, that one. But um, no, so it's a case of like, went to see Aiden, got a lot of little things done and went down to see the TAS team. They've helped me set up the bike and get everything sorted on that side of things. But then went to Cadwell on the Sunday. Now, I had no... I'll tell you what, this is how... I had no idea MSV actually ran their own track days. I had no idea. I always thought it was like, you know, they hired out the circuits to like other companies like um, Focus Events, No Limits and such like that. I had no idea MSV. Had to, and it took some finding, to be fair, because normally you put bike track days and it doesn't, it didn't come straight up. All right. It took some finding. So a lot of them actually found the thing and I thought, oh, man, it went down. And because all you lads were like British, like it was quite a quiet track day and it was I deal and to be honest i'm kind of glad i didn't go to racing because i had a lot of opportunities to try out different things on the bike and fiddle this and fiddle with that and it was not was there and it was good but the only thing is about riding around track days is you do not want to chuck your bike up the road on a track day do you? and and i think it's definitely come apparent i've always had that little bit of fear you know because if i, if I crash my bike i can't afford to fix it but it's a little bit more of a overwhelming after just getting this one it's like I am skinned. <laughs> I am full that skinned. But with that being said, I absolutely love that bike. And you, you know when you just go off someone's recommendations, go, oh, you'll love it, you'll love it. And then you just want to go slap them if they're, if, if they're wrong. Couldn't agree more with you, Chrissy. I'm not going to be Will Smith and you. You're 100% right. That BMW is an absolute dream to ride. Is an absolute dream. So I got out on that. And yeah, just spun some laps, knacked some tyres. Speaking of tyres, that's the first time I've ran the Metzler tyres. So they've got the RR range. You can actually spin that tyre. So normally like Pirellis and Dunlops and everything like that, they've got a rotational and that's where the the way they're manufactured, that's where for the wheel rotation, that's how they break up and wear evenly. Metzler have actually brought these tyres out where they're bi-directional. So if you knack one side, you can take that sucker off and spin it and put it on the other. And to be fair, I am so happy with the feedback because like I say, I've run Dunlops on the big bikes for years. And the way it breaks on the rear, normally, like, when I've been running the Pirellis, and I, Pirellis, don't get me wrong, Pirellis are absolutely, absolutely mint, but the feedback is different, and it's what you get used to more than anything else. Mm-hmm. And, like, on the Pirelli, you, you get a lot of sat, like, for me, it was like, a, I don't know if this is the correct terminology, and something you agree, but, like, a fair bit of a wallow effect. And it's more like the thing mo- it just buckles a lot rather than slides. But... I'm just looking at you and you're looking at your blank expression. Every time you ride a bike, it'll be sliding all over the place. But for me, that was a lot more like, do I dare say it, a lot more like a Dunlop, but with the forgiveness of a Pirelli. Like, it was just that immediate hence of grip, but, like, it just wanted the brake and you could really slide them out on the exit. And I went, I am instantly fell in love with that Metzler. Really instantly fell in love. Because I've, I've rode the Metzlers on the Super Twin and stuff. But, that just, like, the... F- are these slicks that you're in? Yeah, slicks. Yeah, so put some slicks in. I really, really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. So I'll tell you what, have you enjoyed going back to slicks yourself on the Prellies? Have you did you feel a big difference? Yeah, yeah that's what, what's... probably one of the biggest differences, to be fair, from super stock to super bike, uh, is the is the tires. And I'm still getting used to them. Obviously, I've done a couple of tests now in one race weekend, but uh yeah, it, it very much different to the to the road tires. Um just a lot more I guess there's a lot more grip. But it's with the road tires, you kind of feel they talk to you a lot more. So that straight, you lose you lose traction quite early, but then you can sort of, sort of feel them moving and stuff. I, mean, I am getting there with the slicks, and it's just the just a little bit different, a little bit to get used to. Mm. But um, yeah, good, good. Uh, in terms of compounds, are you just stuck on the same compound? No, it was an um, it was a two, an SC two. So right. it was on that side of things. So which is good, like good for the roads. Mm-hmm. But the good thing is, I did a full a full track day on this thing. But like we, I think we discussed this when you won the stock thousand championship. Is that that bike is so kind on tires, it doesn't wreck them. I, I would go do another track day on those things, and I think we got like six sessions, mm-hmm. like twenty minute sessions, and I'm I'm over the moon because. Yeah, even obviously with the you know the, the way I try to chop my own face off and stuff, I was a little bit worried, but no, it, it's come back and it's nice and strong. Yeah, I wish I tell you what, I wish I was getting six sessions. That was uh, tires, tires for obviously tires for me this year is like 
my biggest <laughs> like the single consumable expense and um for there B- is a difference mind you're going a fair bit quicker than me so yeah, you know what i mean I, I, for your bsb allocation so no wet obviously you do need to buy wet a, a lot of the rounds in in the uk but take you don't put tire sticks on for wet what do you think your tire allocation is for a race weekend how many sets six eight sets and then you, uh, if you get you use an all eight set if you get through to q2 you use another set as well so it's it, and if you think I'd, i think they come to something like 350 quid a set it's like big it's big money every weekend like just on tires um jesus wept and obviously like to, to compete at that level you know you can't not do it as well it's it's just one of them things oh my god so yeah it's a, it's, a, it's a massive ex, it's a massive expense huge expense um <laughs> But yeah, so happy with happy with your bike. What's your what's your plans now? Where where are you next out? We've already said, but I'm just asking you. So yeah, you can talk about it. yeah. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Hook line sink there. So no, the next plan from here is uh, Cookstown. Aye. So well, hold on. What day are we on now? Monday. Aye. So we're both at North Hallett North Yorkshire Club tomorrow. Aye. So Pete Aikman's ho- hosting that one, isn't he? Aye. So that'll be a little bit of a. Um, I think Larry's Larry's taking it. I think, but Hickman's coming. I so guess. Mm. There you go. So um, and then from there, Wednesday night, getting on the ferry, getting myself over to Ireland, doing a day's work. I've actually got some work over there, so it's like it keeps me keeps me busy, keeps the the tire fun topped up, which is ideal. And then going from there to Cookstown, and I'm doing Cookstown on Fran Counton's 600 and Super Twin, and then. The week after that is Tanra Gay, where I'm on the classic bikes for the Davies, and I'm taking my big bike around there. That was a last minute entry, and lucky for me, Sheila and Anne have let me in on that one. So I've handed my money over for that. Oh, shite. I haven't got my star permission yet. Crap, I need to pay for that. That's gone up through the roof, mind. It was like 120 quid previously. Don't quote me on that, but it was like 120, but it's like 260 quid now. Mm-hmm. For, for people that don't know start permission so from the acu uh, if you're competing outside the uk is it yeah so out of the like out of their jurisdiction so yeah so but, but is that northern no, ireland no, but you see because you've got the like the ac like the like the irish acu because you're racing over in northern ireland it's i'm trying to mcui so motorcycle ah, so the so the governing body for motorcycle racing in the in england scotland and wales is the acu but, but in northern ireland it's that one that's it but also the tt in the southern they're up they're acu based yeah, for the Isle of Man, so mm-hmm. you don't need star permission to travel over. That's but... interesting. Isn't it? So yeah, to race in Northern Ireland, uh, can you get a yearly pass for that? You can, but I don't think it works out. When you... It used to pay like six hundred quid, but then you could do like infinite rounds mm-hmm. kind of thing. But I think, like for me to do Macau, I think it's just shy of six hundred quid for me star permission. Yeah, but you know what that money is essentially for, don't you? Like, so it's about for the insurance for if you if you. Uh end up in a box to get yeah shipped, exactly you? that's it so mm-hmm. pretty much it's 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 the money to transport your body mm-hmm. that's what it is so really it's a bit of a thing like, doesn't bother me does it you know what i mean so i don't really want to pay the money it's not my problem i'm dead you know? <laughs> but it's uh no i've got to hand over that one get that all sorted ready for the next one and then there's a lot of hidden cost in racing that people yeah, just don't a, know about, is there? But, that, that, that's clearly one of them. Well, the van, the van alone is like five hundred and twenty quid to get over. Mm-hmm. Then the entry fees just shy of three, and then you've got the two hundred and fifty quid for the star permission and two hundred sixty quid for the star permission. It said that the thing's up, doesn't it? It does. So you, the so things you do over, for entertainment, Chrissy. Know, the so things you, you do, son. So you're going over uh, Cookstown on next weekend, Tandrugi the weekend after. And you'll be at Alton Park. Getting out on the big bike at Tandrugi. That's the plan, yeah. So I'm there with the Davies lads on the classic bikes, and then I'm. I don't know much about Tandrugi. How how um, big's the tr- circuit? It's uh, a five point two lap, five point two mile lap, like a sort of mini TT, if you like. But that, that's what they actually class it as. You know what I mean? So no, the mad thing is, it's their sixtieth anniversary of the event wow. as well, and it's. I tell you what, it is unbelievable. I'll have to show you an onboard of it. It's um, there's a crack moment. Malachi and Mitchell Thomas on board Cookstown Engineering's bike. And it is absolutely awesome. My, that's the thing about road racing. The laps are so, so big. You could, you could be there forever watching it. But there's like through like the bottom end of the section, there's not many passing points. But even coming on the start line, it's a full first gear right hander. And it's I've been there once. And the first time I went there was on a big bike. And you just 5.2 miles is a lot to learn. Mm-hmm. You know, when you think about it and trying to go fast on it is a total different thing. So 
It's funny, our, our tagline for the podcast is everything from Tandra Geek to MotoGP. And we've already done it. I've already <laughs> well, done it once. I know. I, well, I'll never speak about it. But <laughs> I'll see um, Tandra Geek on board and see Javansi talking us through a lap. I am the total wrong person to talk you through a lap. very much. No, I do. Like, um, when I went over to put my entry in, um, when I was at my- when I was injured, I went over and I thought I'm going to try and do as much homework as I can because, like, it, it's it's so beneficial driving the laps because you can see where the off camber is, where positive is, and you got a lot of references. And I think that's that is the only bugbear with Irish racing. And I think every rider will totally agree with me when I say this. They just they just want more track time, and it's what the count the local councils can give you. You know the the event of the cost. I don't know if they'll. Uh... There's Paul Gartland there. The only man who wears a late neck brace in road racing. Really? Yeah. I, uh, I James, James Egan used to wear one. Does he? he well, he used to, but... Uh, so this is Tandra Gee, King of the Roads. Oh, so that's the actual footage from it. So that, is that the... Oh, but there won't be the onboard, but then, like I say, but there's, there is so... If you, if you type in Malachi or Mitchell Thomas on YouTube, but I tell you what, even better, if you watched him hit the bomb hole, it is absolutely phenomenal. You, they just fully take off the ground. There's another rider. I think we mentioned him before, but Derek McGee is not making an appearance absolutely anywhere of it. What's the average speed round here? You know what? I've no idea what the average speed is. Most road races they do. They, they, don't they do tend track. to go, they don't do lap lap paces. They tend to do it in like um, average speeds, don't they? Mm-hmm. It's a very valid point that Jamie Coward came off here once. It's big and, jumps here. Oh yeah, totally blind, all downhill. But I tell you what, as far as if anyone was going to go watch. A road race. The two, the two I would put, I'd recommend them all because obviously I'm biased towards the sport. But if you're going to go watch, go watch Tamrigi and Armoy, hundred percent as far as spectators there. I tell you what, <laughs> Guy Martin. I watched Guy Martin wipe out Paul Jordan there. But you know when Guy Martin made his return on the Honda, that was my first year there. Oh. But you can just see, but like, yeah, but even going back to my prior point, like it's the fact of you only get five laps. It's not much as it. Five get your, laps. Get your high in. Because the thing is, the club relies on the entry fees to get there. Because, like, and they need the entries, so they need to update the class. Sorry, provide the classes to get the money in. Mm-hmm. So you go out your first lap, and you just think, right, you've got to get your eye in. Second lap, you're going to try and warm the tires, and then you're begging for a clear lap to go. So you got. It doesn't look like. I think this looks like the biggest straight so far. This looks like the motor run on their mind. But then you knock out a gear, and then it's a blind so, right about hander. Fifth. Six back to fifth, back to fourth, drive it on, and then you come. That where um, Davy Todd had, No, that was also one way. Yeah, that, that oh, the off Deer's Leap. That, that looks, was massive. looks similar to Deer's Leap. That's right it. But watch this. Yeah, see that? We're going to turn right here. So back down to first, back in. Now, watch how narrow the road gets here. Oh, it looks like a back lane, that, isn't it? Oh, but that's it. Especially in a. You can't. You can barely fit two cars down there. Mm. You know, if you drive around that on the public roads. Mm hmm. I tell you what, the amount of road racing fans that'll be listening to this now in the background go, why don't you talk us from a lap? I barely know it, but watch here. Like I say, there's footage off there. Like, you are fully off the ground going into the bomb hole on that side of things. Then down here, hooking out all the way down to first gear, and then chucking it in the right. That's actually like a proper negative camber, that. It's quite loose with the stones. But with the sun in your eyes, you're totally... But It's just, it's committed. See, for me, I'm counting the trees. See the fourth tree on the left hand side there, that's the apex. Like when you go like when I go short circuit racing, like the referencing is so much harder. Mm-hmm. You're constantly relying more on feel than short circuits, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, you just think, well, oh yeah, just got it stopped there. But here Do you know com- compared to like say the TT, you like prop you proper push at the TT. Do you push this to the same level on the race like this, or do you kind of just build up to the TT? Personally, I build up. I build up the TT because that's that's where I am. But so for, the, it, for like events like this, do you kind of like push reasonably hard to like sort of get oh, your eye in, but not you're not like you're not going balls balls out. Sort well, of. It, it, yeah, yes and no. It, it's it's one of those because it's like you're trying to simulate like that. The every Irish racer says the same thing. That is as close you're going to get to on this side of the season to the TT. Hundred percent agree with them because it's like it's it's that violent nature of the bike. You know, you're just crossing cambers, the bike's moving, it's twisting all the time. Mm-hmm. Like the Isle of Man, there's only a hand. I think there's up to like, correct me if I'm wrong, five or six. I think there's only five first gear turns, not even less. 
like first like first second gears the rest is all throttle and letting the thing drive Aye. but like Tamra Gay, there's only a couple of corners like that where you're like first and first and second and uh, compared to Cookstown uh, what's Cookstown like I <sighs> Cookstown's good but it is it's more like a miniature tee to um, northwest if anything solely because it is just flat out down the straight you stop and you turn your fire like you're going up around like McAdoo's farm at the back and it's it's just as narrow as that right and on yeah. the Cookstown is that where you're doing the classic and no so I'm uh, at Tamra Gay, I'm on the classic bikes and the big bike right solely because um, like but I'm just on France 600 and Super Twin at Cookstown right. solely because it, like, two bikes and I think a 600 round there is more than adequate I'd, I wouldn't win a big bike race on a 600 yeah. no, there's no way on God's green earth would I you know you need the power down the straights but it's it. I'm trying I'm trying to do that dangerous thing of trying to keep everyone happy which is impossible yeah and I'm very 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 very, no, no, very lucky that I'm riding for multiple teams so mm. I'm riding for Fran riding for Davies on the classics and then obviously I've got my own big bike with my own team and everything like do, that do you know for the for the big bike uh, say your own team at the TT have you have you got all your uh, sort of sponsorship space sorted for that and like your colour schemes and leathers and all we're, that sort of we've got, we've got a, we've got a colour scheme uh, the Motor Direct team have uh, put got me some levers together which is fantastic i've got some absolutely awesome awesome um sponsors on board which is fantastic there's always room at the end though you know mm -hmm. it's like we've got like like rich energies on board as um, like an ambassador for them which is fantastic uh, the have group they've come on board who sponsor the birches as well so i'm like their only solo rider in that paddock and the good thing about the have lads is like especially uh mick and nigel there and the whole family they understand that I'm not I'm not there to push Hickman. <laughs> not many people are, if you know what I mean. There's not many people that are doing that, but they understand that I have a huge passion for it and I'm there to progress. I'm not there just to I'm not there to just have a Sunday ride round and and I know I keep bringing it up, but like, you know, the in I I am a little bit worried about the injury just because it it, it 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 is a bit of a shock to the system. Mm, but they are fully behind me. There is no pressure and I'm very, very lucky to have that. And you know this we have jumped in the deep end uh, in minor compared to what you're, you're doing chrissy with you yeah. and the family compared to superbikes but you know i'm still very much in the in the in the in the debt pools of you know, debt right now so if there's anyone out there who wants to come on board please get in touch it's quite quite a sort of a deep conversation for the podcast but i was actually i was thinking the other day about the do you know when people say like why why do you someone might have asked us this which might have like inspired the thought but like why why are you doing what you're doing and if I said like why why are you why are you t um you know like taking like you risk. said like you've just said getting yourself in debt going over to do an incredibly dangerous uh, race or race and all year take you know there's it's not for like a financial reward it's a, uh, the chance of you like say going over to the TT and say winning the senior is very slim if I so somebody's ask I'm like interviewing you now why why are you doing what you're doing. Cause I love it, absolutely. Love it. Like that's the thing. It's life's too short, and I think you and me, Chrissy, for example. Like I know I've totally knocked the illusion on the head that you're interviewing us, but you and me are very, very lucky. And what I mean by that is that we have something to aim for in life. And you think not many people have that. You know the amount of people that we know, and people, especially that I know, that are just. I'm almost envious in some ways that they're just happy to exist. You know, they're just happy to bimble on and they're just happy to, you know, go get their paper and walk the dog, you know, a couple of times a day. And you think that's what makes them happy. And you think, fair play. You and me, son, essentially have a disease. <laughs> that disease needs a lot of adrenaline fed to keep us happy. And we're very lucky that, yeah, we have purpose. We have purpose different slightly different purposes but motorbikes keep us keep us going mm. see uh, for me i think that that's the key i think it's a um, i don't even think it's happy because like if someone said uh does like why am i doing it to make you happy well at what point in the weekend are you sort of happy there's like a tiny tiny bit if everything goes well that there's a happiness to it but a lot of it it's like an uphill struggle like going say you're going to say a bsb weekend it's like incredibly stressful to get there yep. to get everything organized you then you've you know just before the sessions you're not you're not enjoying it as in like haha this is great <laughs> like whatever it's like yeah. you're there you're, it's incredibly serious there's 
you know, it's you're the, going out to race, you sat on the grid, you 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 know that you could get seriously injured if not lose your life. It's not fun as in like, haha, this is like, but there's something like incredibly deep and meaningful about finding something that gives you purpose and then like going for it. And it's like almost like that uphill battle of strat and even like realistically, the chance of me turning up at Alton Park in in a week and a half time or whatever and winning is incredibly small. But that doesn't mean it's not worth going because I'm working towards a goal. And the, the fact that it's almost impossible and same for you, it's there's like something I, I really feel like a, a great sense of purpose and fulfillment from chasing something. And the fact it, it's almost irrelevant, the fact that like how hard it is and the, the chance of actually getting to the top of the mountain, if you like. Um, and it, it's really I love the, all the psychology side of things. And like it's when people do actually get to the top of the mountain, sometimes it's like the biggest anticlimax ever. I know Tyson Fury's obviously spoke about it. He spent his whole life sort of um with the goal of beating Klitschko for the world championship. And when he actually achieved that, there was a great emptiness in his life. And he almost lost his life after that because it, there was nothing there. And lots of people, yeah. people will be listening to this and like have uh, em- maybe a sense of emptiness. Of, but I, th- I, I do believe that there's ev- out there, there's, there's a purpose for everybody. And some people might not have found their own purpose. I, like I said, I th- repeating what you've said, I, th- I feel incredibly lucky that we have we found our what gives us purpose mm. and, and we're working towards it where well, lots of people haven't yet but there is something out there for everyone that that sort of takes that thing it's same, same for lots of do you know when pe- i think people spend the whole lives like say working whatever it is either if they've got their own business or working in, in any job and the kind of dreaming of retirement but for lots of people when they retire the first two weeks is great and then they suddenly get a big shock that there's like a big hole in the life like an mm. emptiness lots of, lots of people can sort of fill it in with grandkids and or maybe like work doing charity work or whatever or something but it's so important to have something to work towards like absolutely but uh yeah like i said it's very deep in the uh, it's, podcast, it's, it's, it's got it's gone pretty heavy there it's gone pretty heavy uh, it's, no it's it's mental no it is mental but i'll tell you what for, for me in particular that's that's probably why i push so hard at the tt because it's so easy to base yourself on everyone but around the isle of man because there is so much risk that self-reward is massive you know, it's about just that little bit more of a push, that little bit more of a push, and it's just, oh, it's it's mint. You know, I like you just want to get that little bit more progression, and mm. you, you don't. I find myself, I don't, I don't. You know, practice week you do. You you have that short circuit mentality. You know, you you look at everyone else and go, oh, they're doing this, they're doing that, and there's that competitive edge. You know, you're like, oh, they're shit, 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 and you get wound up. But then, when you pull in. Like out after the races, you don't, you don't. Like, oh, where did I finish? You don't. I, I speaking on my barb. I don't care. I just want to look at the sheet and go. Did I, did I improve? And that, that's where my high comes from in racing. It's not like where I finish in yeah. the race. It's just about that. Why, why put all the struggle and the effort in without seeing progression? There's no way on God's green earth, I would wouldn't try as hard as I am and if I was going backwards. Mm-hmm. That happens, don't get me wrong in that in sport, but thing, no, yeah, no, the thing no, 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 the macro from the level. bottom to the top. If yeah. you look at a particular week, some weeks we have speed. Like we'll this have... week now, will be down. Yeah. Like, really <laughs> exactly, down. Exactly. But and same for the TT. If you look at like a fifteen-year career or whatever, it won't. Like if you sort of make progress, progress, and then like plateau, make a little bit, and then up. As long as the general trend's going up, and that's kind of why I think there's. Um, I know you mention all the time about like sort of p- putting a particular figure on or your progress or whatever, but it's. Um, as long as you're going and you you're learning something and things, it's mm. there's there's no your your um yeah there's no like you don't have to do anything like oh I but no but I that that's there's across that's I... across a walk of life in general but it's like that's that's probably why I've got such an attraction element. Like, you get one crack at it a year. Mm-hmm. You know if I went if I went to Cadwell I could chase Cadwell every week I could book MSV I could book No Limits I could book any any event and go around that bit of tarmac as much as I could physically afford. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That, the Alaman TT on a big bike, they shut it down once a year for you. Mm-hmm. Once a year. And that is a proper, it's a proper buzz. The fact that you're sitting on the grid going, Oh, you've got to! Oh, you've got to go. I don't know if it, like a magic genie came to you and said, "You can, you can, you can choose. You can either be happy or successful, but it's one or the other. Which one would you go for?" Happy. So happy without success. Like it's a, it. You but can't, then there's, you a, have there's a there's a paradox in that in itself because just to find success. I, we, we, yeah, but we've just been speaking about some people are like happy with. Uh, I'll be happy with a faster lap time. So there you are. <laughs> no, that's, but, but like, but that's not would successful. You, would, you would, see, that, that's that's the argument. Because... That's what I'm saying. Like, would you be um, happy and unsuccessful, or successful and not? Sa- uh, let's instead of saying happy, let's say satisfied. So would you would you prefer to be satisfied but unsuccessful, or successful but unsatisfied? I I speaking on my on me. Mm-hmm. I am fully, fully aware that, quote unquote, I'm going to be unsuccessful in the eyes of the bigger picture of motorcycle racing. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be world champ or I'm not going to be the, the next Hickman. I'm not, you know what I mean? It's like you look at you look at the paradox around that. You know, it's a fact of like, I first got on a bike at 21. You know, you've got like Hickman's on a bike from 17, British career, the money element, everything like that. No, but that is... That is so good that they've got those opportunities and done that and they have grub, grabbed them opportunities and built something on it. So in turn, I am not going to be able to get to that height now. Like I, I, I know that. But that, that that's even going back to the main question, like my happiness is like what I'm trying to chase and that's what I'm doing at the moment. Mm-hmm. So me in the idea, my own idea of success is Mm-hmm. Is it is achievable, and that's where the happiness and the. For in, I don't. I don't, for uh, me, I don't. I don't think that's happiness because it's it's something a lot deeper. Because like, if you wanted to just have short term happiness, you could like say you could go to Amsterdam and you could get loads of space cakes and just have a weekend. I was yeah. thinking of something else, but you could. <laughs> you, <laughs> what were you thinking of, Christopher? Yeah, but there's, that's not. It's not deep and meaningful. It at the time you'd be. It would be great. Like say getting. You know what I, you know what I'm talking about, but yeah, yeah. that's happiness. But it, it's like it's it's not a very good thing to aim for happiness, is it? Because like that, it, I, I think I think I, I think you should you should run out of room on your gravestone. That's what I believe. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you know what I mean. You know when you like you know you just think you you, you want to. I'm I'm definitely a yes man, and I like being a yes man. It's like, do you want to go do this? Yes, 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 yes. I want to try and fit in as much of a story of my own life. You know, it's never going to be published. It's never going to be this or that. But I like, you just try and cram in as much as your life. And and that's why I love bikes so much because the amount of walks of life, and like even doing this show, Chrissy, the amount of doors this has opened, Mm -hmm. the amount of people that we've met and interviewed and I got to know and... I t- I, I've and just, that, that magic, it, an I've just easy thing. I've just remembered what made us think about this. I, was, I won't name the person I was speaking to, but I was speaking to somebody and he was basically saying that he thinks I've made a massive mistake going up to Superbikes this year because it, because of all the top riders that have came back from World Superbikes and all this. It's so competitive that you've picked like the r- worst year to do it. Not at all. But f- that's only if if your success criteria was a certain position, yeah. then I would accept then that you've... you've it's a it, uh, tactically, it's a, uh, not a very good year to pick, but that's not where my success criteria comes from. Exactly. So the fact that if um, if Vinales and po- oh, like all the top right and I'd, I'd drop down the order, that wouldn't make me feel any worse. Like if there was Aye. better riders coming back, like um, let's say top rack came to thinking it dropped down as another position, that doesn't make like the numerical where I am because I'm like work towards something and the fact that there's world class riders in the championship is like is a better massive thing? positive yeah I couldn't agree more it's like, without sounding like a dodgy military advert but you want to be the best you can be <laughs> in it you know what I mean you do don't you and mm. you think if you can you know you, you want to lie like, I would like to lie there in many moons and just look up and go you know what I, I gave it everything mm-hmm. and that that's the thing and like you say it's like it's mad it's mad and I think you know, even even going down like this, meet like deep, meaningful conversation and stuff like that. It's a bit like even like the progression of this pod. You know, it's with every with every every growth of it. There's always someone trying to tear that down, and you think it it's almost it's it's mental. 
the whole world's mental and people almost feel like they have to share their opinion on the end. You think, you know what, I'm I'm here for me. Your opinion doesn't matter on that side of things. It's mental. Mm -hmm. It's mental. Like that one person saying that to you, it's like, well, they don't have a... If they've said that to you, they have no idea what you're what about. My, yeah, what my life's about. Mm -hmm. It's mad, isn't it? Mm, very much. Well, now that everyone's gone to sleep, wake <laughs> up. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> but no, <laughs> no but it, it's weird. It's weird. Mm, so but you know when you sat back, it's pretty psychopathic what we're doing. You know what I mean? Like, Hundred I mean, percent. That's, 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 why why, that's why we're having the conversation because if for a lot of people, people might think it's a very odd. Like it's a hundred percent. Lots of people. Odd. What you're, what we're both doing makes no logical sense to the, that's to it. the Like why on earth would you spend every penny you've got and risk hurting yourself, risk doing this to, in in pursuit of something that it's not like if you get there you're gonna. Yeah, if and some people don't about... understand, but if the race, racing people do understand. And that, so. that, that's the best thing about the paddock is we're just a bunch of psychopaths travelling around together, aren't we? Mm. Fundamentally, you know, even all the fans, all the marshals, everyone, we're all, we all understand why we're there. And that's why it's the world's greatest sport, in my opinion, because we're all just a bunch of idiots Absolutely. going around the world together. No, it's class. Uh, just a, a quick few plugs. I just wanted to say a massive thanks to a lovely lady, Turismo Bakes, who kindly brought us some they were called slutty brownies are down and they were in crow performance colours blue and orange have I just passed out for a second what, what? <laughs> down to uh, Silverstone so just to, if anyone's based near any of the race circuits that we're coming to and want to drop uh, in any uh, chocolates or any other uh, nice delights into the our garage we're great they're gratefully received so Mint. big thanks to them and also we mentioned on the last podcast that we've uh, just recently partnered up with Bennett's and uh, luckily Bennett's are very much involved in the BSB side and the road racing side they're, they've got, they're gonna have something cool at the tt which hopefully we can be involved with and also um at the weekend they had a um the bottom garages were for their customers and uh, as we've partnered up it was great to sort of um share share some resources in that in that front so um yeah and it was it was really cool to see the Basically, the customers were able to actually be on pit lane watching all the bikes go past, have coffee and all that. So, yeah, it was very cool. And obviously, please sign up the Bennett's because we've came up, well, I basically came up with a great theory. Basically, you know how they gave us some jumpers to wear? That was like camouflage in the paddock. I could walk anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone thought I was working at, at the BSB this weekend. Like, oh, get yourself in. I'm like, this jumper is the best thing I've ever worn <laughs> in my life. They, like, it was ideal. So please sign up the Bennett's and then you'll be able to get some camouflage. <laughs> and uh, I will just say, because I've, I've a few people have asked recently, so I've made, I've made, and I haven't spoke about it either on the podcast or on my website or social media or anything. But um, quite recently, I've, I've had quite a big change in my life. And after... <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. After... Uh, <laughs> teaching for so i did my my teacher training straight after doing my degree and then um i did i've done three years teaching and i've been people have like people know know that i i am working as a teacher part-time so i did monday tuesday and wednesday and uh, obviously i also do the podcast and i work for global moto looking after all my, my proper title is social media executive but executive I, I, that wouldn't be going on shut up this. man yeah but uh, anyway I, I look after all the social media work on that and then obviously with the stuff with the podcast and a few other things i do it was just becoming i was kind of spinning too many plates and uh, especially with moving up to super bikes this year and having a heavy involvement with organizing and running the team as well uh, it basically just made it impossible to do everything well. Um, I could have probably managed to do it all, but I would have I would have been doing everything mediocre, and I didn't think that was fair on anybody really. So um, I made the decision to uh, hand my notice in at work. And Jesus. So from um, it was like a couple of weeks ago now. So uh, yeah, I've I've just before the Easter holidays basically. So yeah, I've I'm no longer actually working as a, a maths teacher anymore, and. Um, in between the race and obviously still working for Global Moto, who are one of my main sponsors and um, and sponsor the show is Colchester Kawasaki. And uh, yeah, and a few other things that I'm doing as well as the race. And so, um, yeah. What are they going to call you now? Because you had like the teacher written in your boots and all sorts. You're going to have to change your title. Well, yeah, so. I haven't got anything. I've still got the maths and obviously there is a link to maths and I'll still be doing a bit of tutoring and stuff. But um, uh, is that what was that like? Like 20, 28 year old, 27 year olds, gorgeous blondes. Is that your kind of market for the tutoring element? No comment. No. Comment. no. <laughs> so um, yeah, being so yeah, I just thought I would I would mention that just because um, 
<laughs> yeah, saves people asking. He's one of the lads now. He's one of the lads. <laughs> that's, that's what, I will just I will just mention as well. I won't I won't mention the student by name, but on my on my last day, I I was given a very lovely gift, and it I, it was very touching. So one of one of my students that um, uh, I've taught for a few years now. Uh, he didn't know, so it was Monday was my last day, and um, I told him the week before that I was going to be leaving that week. But he obviously presumed it was going to be on the Wednesday, and so on the Monday I told the class that it was my last day, and he came up to us at the end of the class really concerned, and he said, oh, "I've I've bought bought you something," and um, I thought it was going to be Wednesday. Oh, what he said, what, "What time will you be still in school?" And I was like, "Oh, I'll be back for an hour for a meeting," and he said, "All right, great, I'll go home and I'll get my mom to come back and drop us off." So he, he, I didn't even get to see him. He just left it at reception, and uh, it got to us. But it was a this a good luck coin. It comes in a proper like little case, and uh, it says "good luck." And then on the back it says, "If you remember that the greatest strength comes from within, you can do anything." So how nice is that? So if it might even be listening, and uh, I was incredibly touched by that. It was very, very kind. Fair enough. There we are. So um, yeah, but did you get any wine? You wouldn't have got any wine. I'll drink no, the wine for you. Do you know what? It was funny because I've never. I've worked at the school for three years, and we've never ever. I've never. Well, the, a couple of times we'll have socialised together, but I've missed it with racing. I've never ever socialised with the the department, and uh, we did actually have a leave and do. We did one of those escape rooms. I don't know if you've ever done one. Aye. But we then went out for a meal and and went. I wonder out how many of the staff like, members gone. Who is this guy anyway? For he's your... been here for three years. Re- really? I know, <laughs> but and, we don't um, see him. <laughs> but it, 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 as it happened, we ended up having a, a brilliant time, and it was uh, yeah. I've I've really enjoyed working there, and I, I will definitely miss the the staff and the kids. But um, like but, I say, you just can't you can't do everything and um well, the mad thing is so you've got the degree you've got the experience and it's it's definitely a career that you could li- you could walk into anywhere in the country and get a job you know what i mean they're crying out for teachers and everything like that so it's definitely a career there if you chose to take it back up you know what i mean so you're doing you're doing the right thing for yourself at the moment so fair play to you son fair thanks, play to you and there you go and if that fails you can go back to spinning plates in the circus you That's know like, <laughs> now um so this we have actually had to squeeze a couple of podcasts in so we're going to be podcasting again tomorrow and then have and we actually got anyone the sorted not yet but we will <laughs> and then uh so yeah by the time this goes out you'll have just raced at cookstown and you'll be at tandragee next week so if anyone wants to to go and watch is it free to watch a tandragee it is, but please buy, like buy a program. Yeah, you know what I mean. Is that it's, how the club get the money back in? Pretty much, yeah. So obviously, you know, the, these clubs don't run on fresh air. You know, they need the money in, and that is the best way of doing it. You know, you can advance buy tickets and everything like that. The paddocks are open, and everything. But if you come over, just you know, at the end of the day, I think the you know the program price come to like a tenner. But you know what? It's a tenner. It's a, it is a lot of money, but it, it's not. You know, if you want the sport to go, if you've made the effort to turn up at a road race, try and give something a little bit back. You know, with the greatest spectacle in life isn't a Damon, isn't it? So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pay, gotta pay your way, gotta pay your way. So no, awesome, Brilliant. awesome. And uh, and obviously, BSB test was on Thursday gone, and com- weekend coming is Alton Park. It's a one of the best tracks in the country, I would say. Fantastic place to come and spectate. Check the weather, and uh, if it's looking like a nice weekend, get yourself down camping. Camden is just on track side. It's um, whether you come in with with the lads or if you come in as a family or a couple. It caters for everything. There'll be live bands and it is it's a great weekend. And if you are coming, uh, pop down to our garage and uh, come and say say hello. But uh, and I think that wraps everything up. Anything else to go? Off? Nope, not that I can. Nope. Think is there still room on your fan wall? Oh yeah, there's all. I made that all, sound like I want to join. No, I meant yeah, for the yeah. listeners there. All, all year, all year round. So um, yeah, that. It, yeah, I've got a, a big uh, sort of supporters wall in the on the garage boarding, so you can you can buy. So I've got small squares which are five centimeters by five centimeters. We've got ten centimeters by ten centimeters, or fifteen centimeters by fifteen centimeters. But obviously on the garage boarding, and you get also put into a, a Facebook group where I do like behind the scenes. We do giveaways and stuff, live streams, all that sort of stuff. So um, obviously as business businesses can sponsor us and promote the businesses but if you're just an individual and you want to help us out then uh, that's a great way to get involved so appreciate for the the the, the opportunity for the plug and uh <laughs> yeah massive thank you to all of our uh well our sponsors colchester kawasaki all of our patrons and uh we'll really look forward to to the next podcast so take care and catch up soon see you a bit soon chasing the racing
Powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group, we supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles.